both of these oil filters will screw onto your engine and both of them technically fit but only one of them is actually built to protect your engine long term most serious engine damage doesn't come from abuse it comes from silent repeated decisions that feel harmless at the time like choosing the cheapest filter because it's just a filter today i want to walk you through what actually matters inside of an oil filter where cheap filters cut corners and how to choose a good filter without needing to be a mechanic or an engineer most drivers think the oil does all the work and the filter just catches a little dirt that's not how it works in real engines your engine sees cold starts, high oil pressure, heat, contamination, and constant circulation. And every single time oil moves through that engine, the filter is the only thing controlling what actually reaches your bearings, your cam journals, and your timing component. You can put great oil in an engine, but if the filter is weak, that oil can't do its job properly. Most people change oil. Very few people choose filters intentionally. And that's where the invisible damage begins. The first place cheap filters quietly fail is the filter media itself the material inside that actually traps contaminants. In better filters, the media is dense, layered, and designed to hold debris while still flowing efficiently. Here's a Wix filter. See how it's all the same? In cheaper filters, the media is thinner, less uniform, and it has much less surface area. Here's a cheap filter. Brand new. I just cut it open. Here's why that matters. On cold starts, oil is thick. Thick oil does not pass easily through weak filter media. When resistance becomes too high, the filter's internal bypass valve opens. When that happens, oil skips the filter completely and goes straight back through the engine unfiltered. This means your oil can be brand new and still be dirty as it circulates. The second failure point is small, easy to overlook, and responsible for a massive amount of engine wear over time. This rubber valve right here is called the anti-drain back valve. Its job is simple. It keeps oil from draining out of the engine when the car is parked. Better filters use silicone here because it stays flexible under heat. Cheap filters use low-grade rubber. Over time, heat hardens rubber, it stops sealing properly, and oil drains back into the oil pan. So what happens next? The next time you start the engine, the oil pump has to refill the filter before oil reaches the top of the engine. That means dry friction for several seconds every morning. That's why you sometimes hear ticking for a few seconds after a cold start in an older engine. That's lifter noise from oil starvation. It's not dramatic, but it's cumulative. And cold starts are responsible for the majority of engine wear over an engine's lifetime. The third failure point is structural strength. Modern engines operate at surprisingly high oil pressures, especially in variable displacement and turbocharged systems. Cheaper filters often use thinner steel in the outer can and weaker internal support. Under pressure, these cans can flex. In extreme cases, internal elements can collapse in high mileage turbo engines running cheap filters. Not common, but it happens. And it's something you don't usually see happen in real time. You only see the damage afterwards. So what actually makes a good oil filter? Not the brand name, not the color on the can, just the engineering inside. Here are the construction principles that matter. First, high quality synthetic or blended filter media for proper filtration and flow. Second, a silicone anti-drain back valve that stays flexible under heat and time. Third, proper bypass calibration so oil only bypasses when it truly must. And fourth, strong internal support and consistent manufacturing quality. If a filter is built on these principles, it will protect your engine far better than most people realize, regardless of brand name. Here's the practical real world advice I give customers every day. If you drive mostly short trips, cold starts matter more. Prioritize valve quality. Look for silicone valve on the spec sheet or packaging. If you drive long highway miles, consistency matters more than the brand. Stick with a proven mid-tier option that works for your engine. If you run extended oil change intervals, premium construction isn't optional. Cheap filters simply don't last for extended miles. Mid-tier filters are often perfectly fine for normal intervals and moderate driving, but extreme cheap always becomes expensive later. It's not about buying the most expensive filter on the shelf, it's about avoiding the one that quietly compromises protection. Now filters are only half the equation. The oil itself matters just as much and choosing the right viscosity and spec for your engine is where most people get stuck. That's exactly why I built my oil and filter guide to explain how oil and filters actually work together in plain English so normal drivers can protect their engines without guessing. If you want that deeper breakdown, the guide is linked in the description. And if this video helped you protect your engine a little better, that's what matters the most.